I had more here. Uh, <laughs> but I am that tall, okay? So anyway, well, welcome everyone to Essentials. And I'm going to be running through a handful of EKG cases, 10 minutes times three. And we're gonna, we've got a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to jump right in. This first session is on subtle findings that predict that a STEMI is about to happen. We're going to start out with some cases. All right, all of these are real cases, by the way, and some of these have been submitted by various people. First case, 87-year-old man comes in from church with what we refer to as church chest pain. You know, church syncope, people in church have a tendency to have all kinds of medical problems, and this one came in with this funny feeling under his chest. It's not pain. Every time you ask him, is it hurting? It's not pain. Rate your funny feeling on a scale of 1 to 10. He won't do it. He just says that there's funny feeling under his chest. So we get a quick 12 lead ECG. Take a look at this. This is his ECG read as normal by the machine, the cardiologist, and the emergency physician. Here is the baseline right here, all right? All right, so what ends up happening with this guy? He gets some IV fluids. You know, 87-year-old who has any complaint, you can always justify a fluid bolus and admission for dehydration, right? It doesn't matter. So he's coming in. He's coming in, all right? His EKG, unremarkable. You know what? Let's give him some subliminal nitro, and if it feels, makes him feel better, bam, we've got ACS. Um, even though we know nitroglycerin really is neither sensitive nor specific. Nitroglycerin doesn't do anything, so he's going to be admitted for dehydration. An hour later, he's still got this funny feeling, but now something bad happens. He breaks out in a sweat, and as you know, diaphoresis is bad. I always tell our residents, if your patient sweats, it ought to make you sweat. Right, chest pain or funny feeling diaphoresis. So we get a repeat 12 lead, and now he's having an inferior wall STEMI. ST elevation in 2, 3, and AVF, and actually we could predict it based on his initial 12 lead ECG. Here is the initial 12 lead ECG. Anyone want to shout out what lead is your concerning lead here? AVL, it's one of those Rodney Dangerfield leads, right? A lead that gets no respect. So let's go through this. This is your normal 12 lead. Notice the T wave in AVL should be pretty much flat or a little bit upright. If you ever have a flip T wave in AVL, you need to worry about an impending inferior wall STEMI. I remember when I was in residency, I had a cardiologist tell us, believe it or not, he said, if you're in the cath lab and just for fun, you tie off the right coronary artery, True story. If you tie off the right coronary artery, the first thing that happens is not ST elevation in 2, 3, and AVF. The first thing that happens is you flip your T wave in AVL, and then the ST starts to sag in AVL, and then your ST start to rise. In other words, the reciprocal change occurs first. So this is a no-brainer inferior wall STEMI. Take a look at AVL. Nobody would pay attention to this because you're all looking at the inferior leads, but take a look at AVL. Flip T wave, ST segment, depression, that is a reciprocal change. The reciprocal change can occur first, and Henry Marriott described this 40 years ago, and a lot of people have not gotten word of this. So you need to learn about reciprocal changes because those can precede the ST elevation. Here's a few more cases. And by the way, notice all these cases I'm about to show you present with reflux symptoms. Reflux is very common in infrawall STEMI, and in fact is the most common misdiagnosis sitting on the chart of a malpractice case for missed. Uh, for, for missed MI. So this patient comes in with re reflux symptoms. He gets some antacids, feels better, wants to be discharged. He was going to be discharged, but things are really backed up. 30 minutes later, the physician finally goes in with the discharge papers to discharge him, and now he's diaphoretic. So I'm not going to give you your discharge papers. Let's just check another 12 lead ECG. And now here is that initial ECG. He's got nothing more than a flip T wave, all right? Um, there's his baseline. So nothing but a flip T wave in AVL. Well, he gets some more antacids. This time his symptoms don't go away. So the physician says, you know what? Let's just watch you for a little bit longer. And they get some serial ECGs and gives us a wonderful opportunity to watch an inferior STEMI happen. So here's the first ECG I showed you a second ago. And now his symptoms are persisting. Here's the next ECG about 20 minutes later. Take a look at AVL. 
It's getting worse. Still nothing in the inferior leads. 20 minutes later, now the STs are starting to rise, and 20 minutes later, right before they go up to the cath lab, he's got a full-blown infrawall STEMI, and the only thing you saw to start with was nothing more than a flip T in AVL. Here's another one. 47-year-old comes in with reflux symptoms, burning, belching. This guy does have a prior history of MI, no history of GERD, and he gets some Maalox and some Zantac. He's feeling a little bit better. Here's the initial 12 lead. He's got evidence of a previous septal MI, and here's the base, here's his flip T wave in AVL. I'm gonna show you his baseline right now. Here is the baseline. So AVL was previously normal, and he's got that old septal STEMI. Well, the patient got better after getting some H2 blockers. He did get discharged. He goes home, and now his symptoms are coming back, so he comes back to the emergency department. You know, I love it when they come back to our emergency department because when they go to a different emergency department, you know what they're saying about you. Wow, I can't believe they sent you home. Anyway, he comes back now, and let's go through his ECGs. Here's his ECG from two hours ago, first visit. Now he comes back two hours later. Take a look at AVL, All right? And a short time later, 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, full-blown inferior, and also he's having an anterior wall STEMI. And the first thing that showed up was nothing more than a flip T in AVL. Here's another one. Here's another patient with reflux type of symptoms after eating some chicken soup. He's feeling a little bit better after some antacids. First ECG shows a flip T wave in AVL, and maybe there's a little J-point elevation, a little early repull in inferior uh, in the infrared leads. We'll talk more about early repo a little bit later, but one pearl I'll leave you with right now, you never, ever, 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 ever diagnose early repolarization when you've got a flip T in AVL. Never, all right? So he's got a flip T in AVL. This cannot be early repo, even though the machine calls it that. So some serial ECGs are obtained. Take a look. Here's the next one about 30 minutes later. Now he's starting to raise his ST segments, full-blown inferior STEMI. How about another case? This is a 55-year-old woman that came into triage with some chest pain. She gets a quick 12-lead ECG at triage. This is a normal 12-lead. I'm not hiding anything. AVL looks normal, all right? So it's busy. There's no beds. She goes back and sits at triage for a couple of hours. Well, now a bed becomes available. She gets brought in from triage, and so she's now in, the, in a room. What's the first thing you do? You repeat the 12 lead, all right? So here's the repeat 12 lead. Take a look. Her T wave is now sagging down. That's a significant change during her pain. And about an hour later, there's a very, very subtle change that happens. Let's see if anyone can identify it. Subtle change. Uh, <laughs> all right. And about 20 minutes after this ECG, she coded. She went into V-fib, they shocked her back, they took her to the cath lab, perfect outcome. Fortunately, she wasn't still at triage when this happened, all right? A couple more cases, Moshe Weisberg sent this one, flip T wave and AVL, there's no baseline for comparison, and this is during pain. This is not an asymptomatic finding. This is during pain. He sees a flip T wave and AVL, I don't have an old one for comparison, so what do you do? You know what, let's check some serial 12 leads. All right, uh, Corey Slovis will be here later on uh, during the conference. One of the things that he swears that he read in the Bible was the phrase, one ECG begets another, all right? He says it was in Genesis. I, you can ask him about that. But when you see one ECG and it's looking a little bit normal, the machine, by the way, will call this at most nonspecific or probably normal. Get another one during persistent symptoms. Get another one. So here's the repeat. ST start to rise. This is about an hour later, all right? And how about this? 73-year-old man, atypical chest pain. The machine and the cardiologist call this nonspecific T-wave abnormality. Now everybody here knows what's going on. Take a look at AVL. That's not nonspecific. That's very concerning. And because of that, persistent symptoms, the physician got another 12 lead, and sure enough, 40 minutes later, this turned into full-blown STEMI. Now, it could have been easy enough to just admit this person for concerning symptoms, but when you've got that T-wave inversion in AVL, all I'm gonna tell you to do is just repeat the 12 lead before they go anywhere. You may be shocked to discover that it turns into a STEMI, and it's a whole lot better that it turns into a STEMI while in the ED than upstairs, because we could activate that cath lab much faster than the people upstairs. Now, there's two times where the flip T-wave can be normal, patients with left bundle very often have flip T-waves in AVL, it means nothing. It's a normal finding. 
Patients with LVH and strain pattern can have a flip T wave and AVL. That also is not significant for anything. The one caveat here, though, is if you have LVH with strain and you have a flip T wave and AVL, it should also be in one. One in AVL together or in neither. You should never have a flip T wave just in AVL and not in one also, all right, before you call this LVH with strain. But those are your two normal variants. So again, early reciprocal changes can precede MIs, and probably the most common place that happens is inferior STEMIs. When you see a new flip T wave during pain in AVL, get a repeat 12 lead ECG. All right, all right thanks a lot, folks.